But you can't really prove it unless you get on a microphone and talk. I actually led thought. Here's your chance. What a deal. Have conversations. You can talk. The Golding Group Strategic Growth Podcast, formerly known as the Neo Marketing Podcast, offers real world advice, expert analysis, and smart success strategies for entrepreneurs, investors, decision makers, and business leaders. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Strategic Growth Podcast. My name is Kyle Golding. I'm joined by my co host, Pritch Pritchard, APR, fellow PRSA. And today on this podcast, we're going to talk to you about ways your business can use podcast. Excellent topic. We've had discussions on this podcast about podcast before. I'm just saying a podcast as many times as I can. <laughs> Today, I'm going to give you a little bit different variation, a little bit different, different information, and very business centric, very Perfect. useful for business. So, we're going to talk B to B to C. Okay. Pretty obvious. Right. B to B. Good right. uses of of podcast there too. Right. B to G. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. And something new and something that has become more important and relevant lately, the great uh, resignation has a little bit to do with this, but also just uh, consumer behavior, et cetera. B to E is what I'm calling it. B to Businesses e. to employees. Ah, okay. Perspective employees. So okay. attract and retain. Right. Retain current employees, attract uh, quality employees, right. et cetera. A podcast could be great for that as okay. well. Um, do tell. So I'd we'll like talk about trade associations, yep. self brands, community building, even fan clubs, yeah. and developing audiences. Okay. These are all kinds of ways. So let's dive right into all Perfect. the ways that let's you can utilize a podcast to convey the information necessary to address these issues. So let's get after right it. off the bat, B to C, right? Business right. to consumer, the very obvious one, right? Right. You can use a podcast to sell your product or service. Well, or to inform the public about your That's product right. and service. So right. there's sales, essentially two subgroups of B2C. Right. You can sell something directly, an infomercial, if you will. Right. Or go a little bit more of the PR route, a little bit more of the of the audience development route, community building yep. route, right. right. And in a non-sales situation. Yeah. Which Perfect. is what we prefer anyways. Too. Absolutely. I, I, selling something just becomes a commercial. Right. But having yeah, conversations we're... about your business and things that are associated with it is less commercial, but can still essentially end up in some sales yeah. funnel for you. Well, uh, for a long time, the tip lists that people put together, businesses put together, were extremely popular. Right. The, the, the podcast is like a, 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 a help list on steroids. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. So there's plenty of ways you can do it. You can have discussions on your podcast about the user experience. What happens when you use your product? How, do, how can you use it? And how does it benefit your life? What ways are people buying it and then using it? That can be from your perspective as, as a manufacturer, as a seller, as the distributor, or the, the end user itself. Maybe on the podcast, you're interviewing people who use your service or utilize your, use your products or yeah. utilize your services, yeah. and they explain in their own words right. what it means to them, how they use it, the benefit they got out of it, the value, et cetera. Right. So user experience is a very obvious very version, obvious. right? Uh, backstory. How did uh, people like to know how things came about? That's right. right. You can definitely tell... The, the story of the brand. You can yeah. have a brand story, brand conversation uh, that is, again, not sales oriented, not about, you know, here's the unit for fourteen ninety five, but right. why we build these units at all and right. how the company got started, how it got its name, all of that good stuff, right, yeah. as well. You can also give examples, examples of how you could use the product or service. So instead of having, you know, Rick here says he does it like this, we could say, hey, you know, you might be able to take this drone out and do nature footage. And this drone could also do things in the city. And this drone could right. also take pictures of your house after a hailstorm. Right. These are different, different examples that you could have conversations about in order to illustrate how your product or service could, could fit into someone's life. And you can give instructions as well. Yeah. A great example. I, I just was stuff. just talking about drones, right? right? So not everyone knows how to fly a drone right out of the box. So why not listen to a podcast or watch a video, a short video right. on how to be a beginner drone, 
But then there's also not just the instructions of technical how to use the, the controllers, but things you need to consider about flying near right. houses, near right. electrical lines. FAA's got regulations. There's that now. too. Where when you can, what size drone and how high you can go and how fast you can go before you need a license, right. or is it a called a consumer model, things like that. So there's a lot of clarity that you can give, yep. a lot of information you can convey in an easy to digest format like a podcast that then makes them and say, oh, this all makes sense to me. I, I uh, maybe have less intimidated by the the product or, or service, and it's something that I want to continue to investigate more that could lead to a sale for you eventually. Yeah, well, exactly. But it's relationship building because now you're being helpful yes. to yes. the consumer. And I love that you said relationship building that dovetails right into my next point, which for me – you know, I'm not a I'm not a salesperson in that uh, you know always right. be closing you know Glenn right. Gary Glenn Ross you know go out there and sell 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 <laughs> I'm not that guy in general right. and I don't really like that approach when we right. when we consult with businesses it's not about a hard sell and right. people don't appreciate hard sells these days we've said it many times on this podcast no one likes to be sold anything yep. but instead of using any of your marketing efforts to directly sell something build a community around your brand. Build fans, build supporters, build people who are interested in what you do. They want to engage. You offer a product or service at a great value, setting many expectations, all the stuff we talk about all the time on this process, on this podcast, right? Having those conversations about community, about who's involved and why in your brand store, all those things can kind of be combined together into community building. Yep. If you build a community around a brand, if you have supporters and you have people who are interested, the actual process of getting them in the store or on the website to buy it right. is not very hard. Well, and then you're building goodwill, and that yes. goodwill comes back in crisis. We've talked about this right. before, That's too. true, too. And when having a community, yes, it's good for sales, and it also is good for crisis. And they got your back. And negative reviews and, and things that might be negative in your world, competitors, yep. uh, you know, maybe taking pot shots at you. Yep. If your community steps up before you even have to. Yeah, major victory. There's great value in that. So. Having a podcast about the why, right? Why the business exists, why right. you do the things you do, how it come about, the people involved, you know, meeting the people and getting some of that behind the scenes access could be huge in a B to C scenario. Absolutely. So then you have B to B, right? And often I have conversations with people. They know that I have not just this podcast. I have a personal podcast. I produce a few other podcasts with some clients that are just their whole entity is a podcast, right? right? Uh, we have the, obviously the podcast studio here. So people ask me questions about podcasts all the time. And sometimes people make the false assumption. They say, well, you know, my business is B2B. I don't need a podcast. Right. They think that podcast is only talking to consumers and trying to sell something. Right. It's a sales vehicle, right. Right. Um, which, of course, they're mistaken. Yes, they uh, are. The Golden Group, we're consultants. We're B2B. We work with businesses, with business owners. We don't sell things to the general public. We're B2B, and we obviously have a podcast. Here we right. are on our podcast, right. right? So there is a lot of ways that businesses can use podcasts to communicate to other businesses. And a lot of the same advantages that you get from B2C yes. accrue in business to business. Yes, 100%. Uh, the same way you talk to an audience, whether the audience is a consumer, the audience is a business owner, a decision maker in a business. It's human beings, again, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But one of some of the ways I like to tell people that B2B podcasting could be very beneficial is it's one thing to tell people, hey, we're great consultants. We're great business consultants. Well, that's an interesting thing to say. Is it true or not? So why not explain your process? Yeah. Explain yeah. how you get from a blank sheet of paper to a, a, a business plan or a crisis communication protocol or a training system right. or a cost saving process. How do you get from, we just met to, we're solving problems and, and and fixing things in together, your business together, together yeah. as the consultant, as the client. Explain right. the process. Yep. And again, it's not about selling you, but when you explain the process, if someone connects with how you do business and what you're offering, they feel like they need it and they feel like you're a subject matter expert yep. and your approach is similar enough to what their approach would be if they had the, the expertise, right. then you have the, the potential to have a, a client relationship. Yeah. And if, and you're much more likely to do business with a, a re, somebody you have a relationship yes. with than somebody cold off the street. You can also offer up some behind the scenes and some mm -hmm. insights into the individuals, to the personalities, to the people, yeah. the people behind the business. Hey, the people make the business. That's right. right. That's why a podcast allows them to speak in their own voice and, and do things like we're doing here, but communicate as directly as possible as human beings 
as we talk about the business and the value for other businesses. Yeah. Makes perfect. sense, right? Yeah, it does make perfect sense. There's also just your brand story. You know, right. we talked a little bit about B2C, your why and your brand story. Right. It's absolutely essential and beneficial to do that in a B2B setting as well. Yeah. Makes yeah. perfect sense as well. And we said earlier on B2C, and it makes much more sense here, actually, to take a PR approach. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by PR, right, when we talk about the difference between advertising and PR is that PR, pitch releases, press releases, all these things, there's no sales component there. Right. Public relations isn't about selling widgets. No, it's about it's relationships. It's about the brand and the people yeah. and the relationships that come with it. Yeah. If you if you write a press release and send it to your local newspaper that says, I'm selling widgets for 1995 and yeah. we got 50 left, come on down tomorrow, <laughs> they'll throw it in the trash, as right. they should, because that is not public relations. That's not community nope. value. There's no news story there. Right. That's sales. Right. We call that the circular file yes, or yes. file 13. Throw it right in, the, <laughs> right in there and right down the drain. If you, you can take that exact same approach – that you would be pitching a journalist or trying to craft a story for a publication and simply tell that story on a podcast. Same approach. It it goes to brand story, brand voice. It goes to trust factors. It goes to all those things. And it's not, one more time, how many times can I emphasize this? (laughs) Not a direct sales vehicle. At no point do you say, push this button to buy it now because you've rent the whole thing. Then the whole thing becomes an ad. So consider whether you want it to be an advertisement, community building, public relations, brand story, and then commit to it, right? Yeah. So you you also can raise or expand your social profile. Mm -hmm. You could talk about the things your business is involved in that isn't the direct process of business. Mm -hmm. So the community causes right. that your business and your employees support. Right. The things you participate in, maybe you're a sponsor or you allow your employees time off to volunteer or members of your staff, your employees, people that participate within your business, maybe they've received benefits from community actions and they want to thank them or right. extend. Having conversations about human beings in their community, right. things you're doing collectively or individually, that's good for the community and again, Zero about selling your product or service, right. but about the people involved in your social profile, about how people would say there's a reason to do business with them because they do these things. They support the local Little League team and the local elementary school and, and the nonprofit organizations, and they do things for their employees right. on a humanistic level, not just simply because it's part of the benefits package or something right. like that. There are things right there that are social capital that you right. can build up by having those conversations on the podcast. It could be something that's motivational, inspirational, inspiring other people to do things in their community, other business leaders to follow suit as well, or just options that you can give people as their business are successful so they can give back in whatever way they want to for their business because they learned it from you on your podcast. Right. There you go. There's also the potential to, if you have a very sophisticated, very involved process of using your product or service. Maybe it's very technical. Maybe there's multiple steps to it. You can explain that process, demystify it and explain it and let people understand that, wow, you know, going through the process, maybe a hospital buying an EKG machine or like one of the big things they put you in and do all these crazy scans. The technology today is amazing. The scans they can do to see what's going on inside your body or make molds for, for your teeth or for bones. 3D printing and all that, right. maybe very technically thick. <laughs> and, it, and reading a manual yeah. on it yeah. may just also be more intimidating right. than, than the product or service itself. Right. So having conversations with real people, and you can start with the basics. You've never, you know, open the box and step one and right. step two and step three. So multi-part explainer where people can learn at their own pace and and – Understand what it is maybe before they buy the product or service or once they have it, make it, utilize it. And if they've already per- purchased it, they, they put their money and in, in effort into it. You want them to maximize it. You want them to get everything out of it. Yeah, so explain all of the details and all right. of the ways you can use it. So a multi-part explainer series right. of podcasts because, again, you're speaking as a human being, maybe – Literally, the expert on one side of the table and a novice on the other side of the table asking questions and explaining, like, you know, making sense so that the listener 
can be gaining the experience that, that the person on the other side of the conversation can yeah. as well. There's lots of ways that you can be very, very, very informative, and it's good for potential pi- buyers to potential purchases and for people to utilize them to get the greatest value out of them once they've actually made the exchange and, and bought your product yeah. or service. I think it's a perfect adjunct to the YouTube, to YouTube. Yes, too. for sure. I mean, absolutely. If, if you're, if your human to human conversation. Yes. Can be even more explanatory than a video of somebody doing something with whatever right. it is you're talking also about. Also something that's easy to stop and start, yeah. you know, take notes, et cetera. Right. And they can, they can, uh, and the passive audio part of it, yes. you, can, you can be exercising, you can be walking the dog, you can be, you know, and still learning. At or the same time. listening while your hands are on the right. item. Maybe you can't right. watch a video, but you can listen while your hands are in the unit right. itself doing the thing that's being described. Right. So those are some so ways that of, you can do lots that as of well. Benefits. There's also, in some industries, there's a lot of things you need to do, a lot of information that needs to convey be conveyed for compliance. Right. To, to, to keep things compliant, to keep them updated and legal and, and all of those things. You, there, there's disclosures and training and continuing mm-hmm. education and all kinds of things that need to happen, whether it's for the company to express themselves to the public and inform the public or the, the company to train up their employees or users, end users, et cetera, about safety, about all kinds of right. compliance issues. Right. So yeah. a series of podcasts could be good for your compliance yeah, as well. And that kind of dovetails me right into when we talk about how your employees could receive some training through podcast series. Right. When you talk about employment, my B to E that I added uh, today, right? Yeah. B to C, B to G, B to B, and B to. Did we talk e. about B to G, or are we well, back compliance, to that? Is, compliance is it is, is, B to it G. is, and and there'll be a little bit uh, in the in the in the second half of this conversation okay, cool. as well. Cool, cool, cool. Because so, I'm really interested in that. I, because B to E literally businesses branding and marketing to potential employees attract and retain is becoming more and more essential these days. In fact, oh I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't do more full podcast on just that concept very right. soon. Right. Uh, it's something I'm working on with one of our partners here in the building. So cool. that more information on that soon. But being able to attract, let's start about let's talk about attract before we talk about retain, right? right. Attracting empl- employees by explaining Again, the why, the brand yeah. story, the people behind the brand, right. what to expect when you work there, the Culture. community piece, you know, talk about your social profile, right. like the things you're involved in, the things that you invest your time and effort in outside of the sales cycle. Right. All of that can be conveyed in, a, in conversation on a podcast. It can be storytelling and yep. scripted, or it can be literally interviews. Hey, tell everyone why you work yeah. here and what you get out of it. You've been working here one year, five years, 10 years, 40 years. Right. Maybe talk about the community involvement that you've done lately or something that the company did for you, uh, whether it was the individuals in the company or, or the, the company itself that did that affected your life or did it affect something in the community. Have members of the community yep. come in and talk about participation, et cetera. There's all kinds of conversations yep. like that that are good for attracting potential cl- right. uh, employees. Well, it's not just about recruitment in that sense either because you're you're honoring your employees yes. while you're talking to them. That too, which is re-engagement. So that goes to yeah. the retention part. Well, there you go. Involve the employees as much as possible. Have as much opportunity to have conversations for feedback. And again, mm-hmm. learn for the other employees, if you have 5,000 employees, not everyone knows everyone. Right. So maybe they can learn some things about some different people in, in different parts of the process. They can learn about how they do their business. They can learn how the whole business goes together. If you have someone talk from accounting and from production and from sales and from marketing and from leadership and from you know uh, logistics, when all these people right. have a conversation about their job and what they enjoy about it and their favorite part and the things that are hard and the things that are, are good, then when the employees listen to the whole podcast, they understand their role in the bigger picture better. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And people like to hear about other people that they're working yes. with, too. And ultimately, really smart employers right now are doing employer branding. They're mm-hmm. branding themselves as a good employer, a great place to work. You know, there's a, we joke all the time, right, about like it, it's the Google campus with ping pong tables and skateboards and <laughs> right. all the rest of that stuff, right. um, which only goes so far to attracting employees. Right. Uh, it was intended to attract and retain the best employees. Wherever you are, there's a situation that is how you do business internally, and it can well, retain your best employees or yep. it can repel them. Well, employees pay attention to culture. Yes, 
I mean, it's really important. And, and especially, it should come from that grassroots up, absolutely. right? It should come from the employees up. Now, leadership can give direction on corporate culture about the things that we believe in at a super high level and at a concept level. But the execution and the commitment and maybe the adjustment over time, yes, comes from the employees themselves. Absolutely. And if they're talking to each other via the podcast, that is much more effective than the CEO talking on the podcast about how great our corporate culture is. Because if if the CEO has to tell you your corporate culture is great, Maybe so there's great. something wrong there. <laughs> so it's great right. B2E yeah. tool I love podcast. It. I love it. I love that addition. Some, another way to use podcasts, I feel really strong about this, and I'd like to see more of this, is trade associations, professional organizations. Right. You're a member of PRSA. That's right. a professional organization. I'm a, we're both members of the Oklahoma Venture Forum. That's right. a professional organization. There's organizations for doctors, for lawyers. There's all kinds of trades, you know, manufacturing. There's all kinds of professional organizations and professional groups that come together and make their industries better, make mm-hmm. themselves better, mm-hmm. make them better at what they do. And those associations of people need to continue to do that, help their members be right. better at what they do. Right. Well, this is a great medium for conveying that information, for conveying training and insights and the latest data, and maybe even discussing legal issues or, or, or technological issues right. that change on a regular basis. A podcast is a way to get in front of those things, keep your members informed, and then keep them connected as well. Well, and I, I would add leadership uh, development to that as well, yes. or, or uh, that's not the word I want to use, but uh, thought leadership. Thought leadership for sure, which we'll talk a little bit of when we talk about self-brands and individuals, entrepreneurs, et cetera, itself. But the benefit of members mm-hmm. is the first use of a podcast for a trade association, but also for the benefit of consumers, for the customers. So if you're a manufacturing trade organization, let's say home builders, right. the home builders association, obviously they want to talk to each other about the latest techniques and safety and construction issues and, and legal issues again. Right. And maybe it veers off into insurance and and materials right. and all kinds of stuff like that too, right? Which is for f- core What's, members. For the members to say, oh, I can train my staff up by learning this. Right. But you can also talk to the consumer about why houses built in a certain way have more value or the reason we build houses different in more Oklahoma right. in Tornado Alley right. than they do in Fresno, California right. or Miami, Florida. Different concerns. Right, exactly. So explaining things, explaining processes, the behind the scenes that consumers might feel better about the association in general. Uh, you know, people like to joke about lawyers, right? right. You know, about <laughs> lawyers and, and uh, we have to pay our taxes. None of us are real happy about that, but it's essential. We work with our accountants and CPAs and bookkeepers. Uh, lawyers are essential as much as people like to make jokes about lawyers, yeah, even well, car sales, right? People right. make a lot of jokes about used car salesmen. So you can combat some of the stereotypes and some of the yeah. negativity around certain industries if you have a podcast that is from the industry, maybe a professional organization moving forward. Some trade associations, professional organizations, special interest groups have to lobby. Right. Public lobbyings. And you know, there's a, and a lot of that is essentially sitting across a table from a, a lawmaker or a policymaker and, and expressing why their industry is in, in concerned about certain things or would like to see certain things. Right. But you can also publicly lobby. You can put out on your podcast what kinds of changes or updates or, or staying the same that you right. need out of your local political leaders right. in a way to for them to hear it and yeah. for the public to hear it and yeah. maybe start a conversation, whether it's on social media or your website or uh, inviting people to public events, et cetera. Right. So there's, there's policy and, and lobbying issues that can happen through a podcast. Absolutely. I think trade associations can find great benefit Absolutely. from if they're already lobbying. I, I agree. And, and if they're not lobbying, just uh, expressing where they are on a particular issue yes. can be very important. I, I, we could have a whole to separate a point. <laughs> one on companies getting into politics. Yes, and we've often and just tried to discourage you from it. We try to stay away that. from it on this podcast because it become polarizing. Right. But having a podcast, and maybe, maybe you have two. Maybe you have a podcast on the right and podcast on the left. Yeah, maybe, maybe you have so. different things, but there are But talking options. about issues that affect your yes. industry yes, for sure. is, what, is what we're talking about. So I mentioned that earlier. Has, that has good whether or not you're uh, – actively lobbying or not. Yes. So yeah, sometimes just maintaining the status quo. Yep. So as I mentioned earlier, 
self brands, yep. people, individuals who are brand in and of themselves. These are these are uh, entrepreneurs, public speakers, authors, musicians, artists, etc. Where the brand is them. You right. know, uh, Elon Musk is a good example. Mark right. Cuban is a good example. Anyone on Shark Tank is a good example. <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk is yeah. a great example of that as well. Uh, anyone who is th- their brand is them, and they are their brand. Obviously talking directly to your audience uh, in a podcast format, explaining that expertise, subject matter experts, yep. uh, et cetera, is a great thing. And you mentioned thought leadership earlier. If your your self-brand is as an executive, as a leader, as, as a top professional, thought leadership, it, it's easy to say a thought, I'm a thought leader. It's right. easier to want to be a thought leader and list it as a bullet point on your, on your CV, right. right? Right. But you can't really prove it unless you... Get on a microphone Once and talk. Actually led thought. Here's your chance. What a deal. Have conversations. You can talk yourself. You could talk with right. another person like we do here. You can interview people. You can let other people interview you. Yep. There's plenty of ways to express your thought leadership right. and your expertise as a brand, as an entity in and of yourself. Well, if I'm not mistaken, your Saturday night or Saturday morning hustle is uh, thought leadership. Sta- it, right? Saturday morning hustle fits into that a little bit as well. A little bit of motivation, a little bit of, of hustle and grind, and a little bit of thought leadership, and, yeah. and a little bit of subject matter expertise yeah. as well. Yep. All kind of rolled up into something I try to keep fun and right. light and different because, you know, you can you could see all kinds of academic approaches to to <laughs> business development and then you can get up on saturday and hustle and grind like i do right. and have a little bit of fun and you know put your ball cap on because you just rolled out of bed and put your t-shirt <laughs> on and and get to work right you know there's there's approach for everyone and everything that's for sure yeah. so self brands can utilize podcasts to cut through the noise and talk directly to their audience to the people you're that they're trying to influence yeah. Same thing, again, for community b- branding, maybe a common cause. So we talk about community building for a brand, right. but literally communities. Right. Uh, if a community has an issue, you know, remember Flint, Michigan, we had the water issue yep. many years ago. There were several podcasts that were spun up around how did this happen and how can it be fixed and, and how do we come together as a community and how do we ensure it doesn't happen and, again. And how do, what do we do going forward? Right. Absolutely. So, uh, you know. There's a lot of things in the news right now about about tragedies ar- around uh, young people and and violence, mental health, uh, mental health. There's if your community wants to address these things, a common cause you would like to address a podcast um, with multiple guests and bringing people in different perspectives, different points of view. It can be very academic or it could be very just uh, guttural, literally yeah. like the emotions involved yeah. in it common interest and building a community around the common interest people who benefit from it who participate in it maybe unfortunately are affected by it but you want to be helpful with them a podcast is a great way to do that right and if it's adjacent to your industry something that you know you don't need to get into every issue in the world but if there's something that when people can come together and do better in a common cause and then your business can help them in some way or participate in some way then putting that podcast forward and helping make that happen it's again not a direct you know one-to-one i mean now we're all going to go buy you know thing or download your app or whatever it is but the opportunity to create that community that then maybe some point becomes a community around your brand so look at common causes and the actual physical communities first. Offer them the potential to be part of a podcast that then might bleed into your brand community. That could even go into so as far as fan clubs. Right. You know, we talk about business sometimes we get really kind of serious about businesses, but sometimes some of the products or services sold by businesses are pretty goofy. <laughs> you know, uh, and I, I think a great example of fan clubs, you know, everyone's talking about Marvel films, right? These right. days, right? You, right. you have all the different superheroes and the different films and all the merchandise that come with it. And of course, they're all based on the comic books that have been around forever. Right. And they have huge fans. They have fans yeah, that have been reading the comics since day one. And they right. got people who are, they collect them in their shirts and they own all the t shirts and the hats and all that. Right. You got people who've only seen the movies, but they love them and they go see them two or three times. Right. And you got people who will wait in line, dress up like the characters, right. and do all of that stuff, right? Those are fan Comic-Con. clubs. Yep. Comic Con, right? <laughs> they, have, they have their own trade shows. Right. Those are industries, uh, are fan clubs around an industry around essentially a business, with you know, Marvel, before 
before Disney owned them, they were a, a, an entity. They were a business. Right. So if your business lends itself for people to be fans, to to have that kind of experience that Marvel fans do, Access. or sports teams do, yeah. you know, professional sports yeah. are businesses. Yeah. They have fans. They have people who engage because they love the game and they love the players and they yeah. wear the jerseys and they do all that. Well, maybe your business can do the same thing. Right. And a podcast, whether it's because you're a professional sports team, Marvel films, or uh, an accounting firm, <laughs> you can create the opportunity for fandom. Probably not accounting. Maybe not but, accounting. But maybe your beverage company or clothing brand or, you know, it's probably something that is a little bit fun and playful. That's why accounting probably doesn't work for fan clubs. But there are ways to, cr- to encourage fandom and fan clubs right. through podcasts. Right. And just engaging your audience again, fans of your brand become the community, become consumers, become the defenders in your public relations arm, and all of those things that are beneficial. And then finally, something that's audience driven, but again, adjacent to your industry. So if there are a lot of people, maybe they're on Reddit or on Twitter or on some uh, other places uh, in the in the stratosphere of the, the Internet, all discussing a topic. And maybe that topic is adjacent to to your business. Maybe they're all talking about, uh, we live in Tornado Alley, and we want to talk about what happens with tornadoes, and you sell tornado shelters. You might want to sponsor that podcast podcast. or create some other, whether it's sponsorship or, or financial or maybe just providing space to have that group come together and discuss it via podcast. Right. And again, not to sell your product, right. but to, for you to be connected to an organic community conversation. Right. That audience development that can come from that, that by just simply being available to them or throwing a couple of bucks at them or, yeah, or doing giving something them a else. Channel. Right, exactly. Anything that's audience driven, that's organic, that's grassroots, that audience driven, attracts people because of the authenticity if you can associate your brand with that authenticity because right you are being authentic you are being helpful not because you only want to sell something right. selling stuff is good but that yeah. can't be your main focus right. but if you support their community conversation allow it to be what they want it to be you'll receive the goodwill from it absolutely and goodwill is so important as we talked about many many That's times right. especially in crisis So think about how podcasts can benefit your business directly or indirectly. We gave you a ton of great examples, but if you have questions, we would love to answer those questions for you. So hit us up on social media, on our website, et cetera. However you're listening to this podcast, ask your questions. We'll answer them because that's what we're here for on the Strategic Growth Podcast. Until next time, good luck. Ciao. Thanks for listening to the Golding Group Strategic Growth Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Tell a friend, leave a review, and engage with us on social media. To contact us, please visit thegoldingroup.com.